Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushcrew. Today we're going to be talking about the brand spanking new, fresh to the marketplace, tier 10 Japanese tank destroyer, the Huri uh, Type 3. Uh, or the Samurai, as you can see here, it's got the Samurai camo going on. Uh, I posted on the YouTube channel community section last night, just giving my early feel on the tank. Uh, and this is the first game I played it in. Indeed, uh, I'd never played it before. And I kind of guessed right on the way the tank needs to be played, which is great, and how it doesn't work. And I played it a lot last night, basically doing both front line, back line, all kinds of different play styles to see how it would work so I could talk to you guys about it with some kind of modicum of intelligence. And I got a whole bunch of idiots who said that the tank was OP. One particularly said I'm a 65% player and uh, Bushka's being paid by Wargaming to say that this is an OP because it's got 250 millimeters of frontal armor and it's incredible and it's just as overpowered as the Fosh was. And I'm like, this guy's a moron. I deleted his comments, went back to sleep and never thought of it again until just now because... Yeah, it does have 250 millimeters of frontal line. You know, it has 250 millimeters of pen. Just about freaking everything at tier 10. The Leopard 1 has 255 millimeters of pen. The, like, T110E5 has 255, 258 millimeters of pen. And if they're running uh, any kind of premium ammunition, like if they actually load premium ammo, everyone can go through it. It's also enormous. Uh, it is the size of a house. But what it does have is this weird armor profile where... If you angle it like I just did there, and they use AP and they don't switch to heat, while people don't realize this, you're gonna get bounces because it goes from being easily penetrable frontally from everything to just above the range of guaranteed pen if you angle it. And that's hilarious because a lot of people don't want to change to Premo. They want to get a full damage shot in, so they just take the shot anyway and they bounce. And that's just called being lazy. But it does take advantage of the characteristics of the player base in that. What it does do well, and this is legitimately something that I was really um, impressed with when I played the tank, um, was it moves around the battlefield very well for a tank this big. Uh, I ran it with a camo net because the, the best way to play this is kind of like a fast moving assault tank, uh, assault backup tank. So you wanna you wanna support flanks and move around, but if you get caught um, frontally with this tank and you're not above them, you're gonna get penned. And even if you are above them, you, you're gonna get penned. Like it's, it does, it's, the, the way I described it is it's like a cross between a grill and a Conway. It's quite quick. It doesn't have 640 alpha. It's only got a uh, a 149mm gun. So it actually does 560 alpha. Uh, but it has excellent penetration. That is where it really comes into its own. Your base AP round is 310 millimeters of pen. And your secondary round is also an AP round. And it does 380 millimeters of pen, which is crazy good pen. Uh, that's just outstanding pen. That's with an AP shell anyway. And it only drops, if you're firing the AP, the primary, it's 560. And it only drops 15 alpha in terms of your secondary round, which is a tiny drop in terms of heat. For instance, like a... Uh, an object 268, for instance, has 303 millimeters of pen, which is great pen, slightly under what the ho -Ri has. And then on its heat round, it has 380, just like the ho -Ri. But it goes from a 640 alpha shell to a 545 alpha shell with heat. The ho -Ri goes from a 560 alpha shell to 545 alpha. In fact, if you run this tank with just the Premo, penning at 380 millimeters, you only drop like 100 DPM, and that's where the strength of the tank is. You are a remarkably quick gun, 0.312 dispersion. Your DPM is not off the charts for a T10 TD. It's very good, but it's certainly not top of the queue. Like guns like the Badger, uh, the Object 263 is miles ahead of you. The FV4005 is slightly up on you. Um, the Grill 15 is slightly up on you, but you have more armor than a grill, and you have an outstanding AP round. So if you want to get in on the ground early and run this tank to the best of its ability, and I didn't realize this till I went and started doing this review, and I really looked at the numbers, run it with the uh, 
high powered AP shell that does 380 millimeters of pen and 545 alpha. Now, it's an odd one though, because like, okay, hear me out on this. There's there's the age old argument between DPM and um, rate of fire. Okay, so you want high DPM. You want the highest damage per minute you can, right? That's great. But with a big TD like this, at tier 10 especially, where you've got so many really good offensively minded tanks, um, having high DPM is well and good, but you may well, like a grill for instance, will hit for 640 and then it'll hide until it's camo resets. You hit for less than that. So if you want to do the same kind of impact that a grill has, um, you've got to reset your camo and then come back out. And it's all doable, but it means that this tank really doesn't get the most out of um, out of back out of frontline camping. Like if you're if you're in close support, you're not going to be able to get the same kind of derpasaurus moments where you do 640 alpha, or if, like you're in a Jaegeru, you can do 800 alpha, and then you just sit quietly and don't do anything for a while again. This tank needs some time on target. So I think it's a tank that's got quite a high skill threshold to get the most out of. 250 millimeters is good enough in certain situations, but good players will just switch to heat and pan you all over. The front of the tank looks a little bit like a Ferdinand. Um, you can see it's got that angled side like a Tiger P uh, just above the lower glacis. Um, but the real danger is like the Yag Panther 2 fill. The reason I compare it to the Conway is the Conway is like a, a tank that has a lower than 640 alpha gun. And yet it still manages to stay pretty competitive because it's got that lovely turret and its mobility and its, its accuracy and it's got like that um, yeah, it, it's a good tank. The Hori is a different kettle of fish to that. So the negatives on the tank are lower alpha um, and the armor profile, once someone figures you out, is not spectacular at all. Um, it's actually very easy. You can see all these tanks will pen you um, and pen you quite comfortably. Um, the thing that it has going for it though, that, I mean, sorry, let's stick with the negatives. Um, you're like any TD, uh, once you get a tank on your side and you've got like 95 millimeters of pen, you're gonna struggle to, I should have pressed forward there a lot sooner, ow. Um, you're gonna struggle to block stuff. You're also prone to high explosive shots from the side. That's why I kind of compare it to a grill because even though it has this frontal armor, you've got like a 95 millimeter side, which there are a lot of tier 10 TDs that will take advantage of that. For instance, a Jaegeru uh, has 85 millimeters of, of um, HE pen, but they can get up to 94 if they manage to, um, you know, use calibrated shells. And uh, Death Star, if a Death Star gets a side shot on this, this tank wow uh ugly town very 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 ugly for you um frontly front uh front on your speed let's talk about the speed because that's pretty uh bloody important um you're able to get motoring quite nicely 50 kilometers an hour that's very quick uh your traverse your hull traverse is nearly 40 degrees when you've got all the bells and whistles on it but it's it's a dpm machine that requires a steady hand and doesn't do well on its own. It will hit point trade and win hit point trades just because it's a tier 10 TD and it has more DPM. But with the buffs to some of the heavies and things, if you stand in front of a mouse, like a dent, eventually you'll die because it'll keep penning your bloody turret cheeks. Like, the, I don't know why people think this tank's armor profile is so good. It's just not. Uh, <laughs> Like, you you do 3,235 DPM with your super high pen. Um, you do 3,324 DPM with your super, uh, your 310 millimeter AP pen. A mouse will do 246 DPM um, pen with its crappy AP gun. Like, it'll still pen you all over the place. Um, and if they shoot down on you, you've got very, very flat areas under the gun there where they can just stick their gun down and press the button and you just get exploded. Um, with all that in mind, I think it's uh, it's a testament to how PUBG, um, how Wargaming are able to balance a tank 
actually quite well out of the gate. And it makes me all the more baffled as to why we ended up with the bloody Sheridan and the T92E1 in the state there in when these things have taken forever to come to the game. Uh, and for the Tier 10, I think it's really nicely balanced. Tier 10 has so many good tanks. Like, it just has so many good tanks. What doesn't... What What do you want to do with it? Well, you can see in all these games where I'm doing big damage, I'm almost... I'm backlining, but look where I am. I Like, I moved early and all the way out to the top of the map so that I could keep the team uh, proximity spotting for me up the front. And then I'm just going to go and support when I see there's an opportunity. I see on the left-hand flank there, there is a isolated mouse and I can see that there's three in the middle, one on the left. Uh, I can move up there if I want and start getting shots. And you'll see as I start burning through the rubber here and trying to get uh, to support my teammate there, it moves very, very quickly. And this is its this is its high point. A good gun with good DPM, incredible pen, and a quick motor. That's that's all you need. And if you've been playing the game for ages, you could take a box with a gun on it, no armor whatsoever, and still walk out and average 2,500 damage in it because as long as the gun works and the game mechanics are exploitable, you can peek a boom and, and do all kinds of things. And just look at it. If you get in a nice situation like this, just time it again. Bang, 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 bang. I think they're going to have to change the uh, premium AP pen. Uh, I don't know that that's going to going to work. Once people cotton on that they're only losing like 100 DPM for using a, a round that does 380 millimeters of pen, um, and I can already tell that people are going to be furious with me for mentioning this because a lot of people don't realize it. Uh, then, I mean, that's a mouse. And this is with my standard AP round. Look at it. It's very easy to get pens off. Like even the upper deck on the mouse, the upper glacis is pennable. I just refuse to move to go and get that other guy. There goes my 4K. Um, look after yourselves all. Thanks very much for watching. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the game. Big patch this. And I'll, I'll come back with a few comments on my thoughts on the differences between this patch and, um, well, not so much the differences with this patch, but the changes and how they're going to affect metas and things. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the tier 10 ho -re. I think they've done a good job with it. And pending some unforeseen circumstances, I think it'll fit right into the meta and be quite an interesting drive, which I like. I'm not a huge fan of the tier seven. I've been driving that a little bit, but I'll figure it out. Until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.